Aloha everyone, this is Sean once again with HomesteadInHawaii.com and today I want to address a question I hear often. How much does it cost to go off-grid in Hawaii? Well that depends on you, okay? Now I'm going to give you a little rundown on sort of the low end of the figures and you can scale up from there. Some people want to get a beautiful piece of property on the coastline and some people just have enough to just buy a simple piece of land to get off-grid. Now that's what I did. I bought a simple piece of land so I can get myself off grid. I was a young 23 year old surfer dude from California and I wanted to move to Hawaii where I can continue to surf and grow my own food. And here I am 18 years later, I've done that. And I did that by starting off by buying a piece of land that was relatively cheap. The land here that I got was $3,000 for a quarter acre. I saved up the, that money by earning tips through Valet, and I was able to purchase that through my savings. The first couple years, I was doing what I could to get my homestead going. I needed to make a room here on my property. The, um, the land was covered in, in thick brush and uh, some scraggly trees. Um, pretty much, we kept the brush, but um, kept a lot of the trees, which I'm happy we did because now they're really big. We have beautiful ohia trees on our property where most people tend to clear those, but that's beside the point. Most lots out here are cleared by a giant dozer, okay? And they rip the lot. They just like come in, tear everything down, push all the orga organic matter to the side, and then come in and rip up all the lava rock that's underneath all that. It's just like thick, hard lava rock. Uh, about a couple inches underneath the soil here. So they rip all that up so there could be like a foothold for plant doing another property. And I say, hey man, if I give you $1,500, will you just quickly run through my lot? You don't have to do, be all crazy ripping it all up, but can you just clear it so I could get in there? And so that's what they did. They cleared my lot. They ripped some of it up, but left some of it intact for fifteen hundred dollars okay and then what i did was i parked my car on my lot it was a volkswagen vanagon where i was able to sleep in the back and i made my little home in there and then i slowly built actually not very slowly it took like three or four days for me to build a small shed where i began making surfboards and that was my initial source of income living on my homestead was making surfboards and i took those surfboards I sold them off and I slowly built a 14 by 20 foot home. It was just a shell when I moved into it. That initial shell cost me about $6,000. And then since then I've, I've improved upon it, but I saved that money the first year and started building the shell off of plans that I got on the internet for $50. I knew nothing about building, but I knew that I didn't want to pay someone else to do it because I didn't have the money. So I just started uh, building based upon those plans and for uh, that $6,000 price, I was able to get an uh, initial shell of a home up. Um, granted, it wasn't permitted here in Pune. Since we're in a lava district, they kind of look the other way out here. So it's, it's possible to build an unpermitted home. You just have to deal with the issues around being unpermitted as you go along. It's harder to sell down the line it's you may get a neighbor to call on you but that's a risk i was willing to take what most people do is they spread out some gravel for the driveway and then some lava cinders for smoothing out the landscape and since my lot was partially ripped um, but still uneven i got some cinders for about a thousand dollars total and was able to have the driver spread it as he unloaded it across my property to fill in all the gaps and then I spread it a little more from there. That I, I am very glad I did because now I, I can mow my grass and have an easy way to keep all that down without having to deal with rocks um, and my mower getting all up into that, which is not a good thing. Another cost of going off grid for some people is fencing, okay? You can put a fence up it helps keeping the, the pigs out and other sorts of wild animals here. It's pigs and dogs pretty much. Uh, you don't want those two guys on your property. The pigs will tear up almost everything you got and the dogs will kill almost everything you got. So keep those guys off your property. You can put up a fence, 
most uh, fence installers will quote you about $10,000 for half an acre. That is a lot of money. It's possible to do it yourself. You got to rent a jackhammer or if you live in a place with soil, you may just be able to dig right in. But where I'm at, we have stray lava rock. So it took jackhammering each and every hole. I was able to do my lot for close to $1,000 by not using chain link fence, by using T-posts, by putting them in concrete and using some sort of agricultural fence to do it. Okay. So if you have the chance, I'd recommend fencing your lot. I, I hear a lot of people complaining about pigs tearing up their gardens and I never have that problem. So you can do it for low cost. My fence was $1,500. It could go as high as $10,000 for half an acre. All right. Okay. After I built my house for many, for many, 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 many months, I was lugging all my water here in Hawaii. The county provides spigots for the public to go to, to get water from. And I was filling up three five gallon um, water jugs almost uh, every two times a week or so for the water that I needed to cook and clean and everything. I had a shower in a bag during that initial time. But I saved up and I bought this water tank that you can kind of see behind me. It was $3,000. I installed it myself. It is really easy to do. So you can safely assume that a water tank is going to be at about a dollar a gallon. Now, if you're permitted, you're kind of required to have to get a 10,000 gallon tank. That is totally unnecessary though. I have a 3,000 gallon tank that has never gone empty. It rains so much here. 3,000 gallons for everything. And we take long baths and showers, okay? That tells you how much rain um, that falls here in East Hawaii. So water, and then I slowly improved upon my solar. At first I had sort of a, a home solar kit that I created that uh, allowed me to um, put on two panels and a couple batteries and whatnot. But now I have a system that is more professionally installed. I have eight panels, I have eight batteries, I have a good charge controller and an uh, inverter. And that system powers almost anything you need. I have a washer, I have a laundry machine, we have lights and plug fixtures, all sorts of things plugged into the plug fixtures. We don't worry about power around here, okay? But initially I did and it started off small with like one or two marine batteries that I got at Walmart and two panels to just charge some of my tools and, and computer and now I have a sort of a whole house. But that took some time, okay? My initial solar setup was less than a thousand dollars and now I've probably spent close to eight or nine thousand dollars on it over this time. I've, I've calculated that my electric bill is around eighty dollars a month if you put it into um, how much I've spent and how long I've had my solar system, okay? Now power in Hawaii is very expensive. It costs three thousand dollars just to bring the power onto your property, okay, from the power company. I think it's even more now. And then the bill that they, the prices they charge is sky high. So if you can go solar, I highly recommend it. Okay. You're, you're just going to save money in so many ways. And uh, then it goes to starting your garden. And we were pretty resourceful with our garden. I got horse manure at the local zoo. Uh, there are piles of soil that were available in different places. There's mulch for free at the dump. So all that is what we use to begin our garden. And then we got plants from friends. We bought some plants, mainly trees, but almost everything propagates so easily out here that you should not have to pay for plants. But I'd put that around a thousand dollars if, if you you know wanted to pay for things, a thousand dollars for a half half an acre. Okay, scale up from there. So essentially, what we're looking at is I started off with ten thousand dollars in savings. I bought my land. I built a shed and then I started to build my initial structure and then a couple years later uh, I saved more money by making surfboards. So it's safe to say for fifteen to twenty thousand dollars you could have a fully set up homestead. If you're willing to go simple not get a huge piece of property just get something that's within your means. One benefit 
little add side note of a small property is it's less work to manage it okay I like being on the homestead but I like going surfing and going on vacations I do not want to be tied to this place okay so having a small half acre property produces a lot of food if you're smart about it and so do not think you need 30 acres to achieve your homestead dream it is totally untrue okay if you don't have that much money start small make your dream happen all right if you have any more questions please leave a comment below like this video hit subscribe and visit us at our website at homesteadinhawaii.com where we're going to be sharing more information for you to achieve your homestead dreams i want to hear from you i want to learn and i want to teach people how to achieve their homestead dreams so please do not hesitate to contact me okay uh, i would love to help you out in any way possible if there's anything you like to see on my homestead leave a comment i'll check it out let's get this ball rolling let's get more of america living off grid let's make it so we're able to provide for ourselves again like we used to the freedom is important in our lives we are meant to live free let's go do it okay aloha everyone have a good one